This conference will now be recorded. Okay, um, so in uh, today's session, we're going to look um, to understand uh, the importance of uh, user awareness. So in the last session, we introduced the type of cyber threat or cyber attack that might occur uh, within organization or even in, uh, just for um, individuals. So we looked into this type of cyber threat and, and um, the categories. And uh, for today, learning outcome, we're going to focus more on uh, awareness of people of these risks and uh, different type of, we're going to look more in detail, different type of uh, security measures that can be um, used. So in our indicative content, uh, we are we're going to, the first um, uh, learning outcome, we're going to analyze the importance of training staff on cybersecurity, examine methods and the content needed to for training staff on cybersecurity awareness. And then we're going to conclude with an evaluation the process just to keep up to date with uh, emerging cyber threats. So uh, as we know, um, this cyber, uh, this cyber criminal or black hat hackers, you can call them, call them in many ways. They always come up with uh, new techniques to hack into systems, information system, technology system of company. And uh, every company has to stay up to date, like in order for them to uh, cope with these uh, attacks that happens on a daily basis. So it's really important for them, for the company to ensure that the staff are really trained and be provide with them uh, useful um, tools and knowledge for them to uh, work efficiently every day and uh, no worry about and don't worry about um, all these attacks. So as we can see, there are a couple of figures that has to be taken into consideration. Where uh, here in the UK, uh, the data breached within our organization uh, annually has an average cost of 2.9 million of pounds, which is a, a lot of money that are going lost for businesses. And, and these are just due to uh, simple errors or, or no coping with these um, new technologies and new attacks. So as you can see in 2019, human error accounted for 90% of the breach. So as I said, most of the time is just by um, mistakes or uh, lack of knowledge by of people, which, um, which makes the organization vulnerable and subject to attack. So um, the process also, uh, of educating employees on different cyber attack risks and threat out of them, as well as uh, potential leak, leak spots. So it's really important that companies can now uh, improve this data and uh, lower this percentage by giving consistent training and, uh, and uh, uh, adequate knowledge to the staff. So as you can see from this image, it also uh, shows the cost and uh, these are a couple of figures. So for example, it shows 24% of data breach are used by human errors. These are all the figures, 3.5 million average uh, total cost immediately by uh, rem rem remediate uh, a breach caused by human error. 
and uh, we can see 133 uh, dollars average uh, per record cost of breach used by human error and 242 days average time to identify and resolve the data breach so once this uh, breaches occur the company quite takes a quite long time in order to not just to fix but also to um, re-establish a good balance within uh, the organization so as we all know these uh, cyber crimes will never they're never going to stop and uh, as we saw from a couple of software you can check you can see the average of attacks that happens in a day and and uh, the, it's really important to bring up this cyber security awareness because um, this field is, go, is just going to be increasing rather than decreasing so it's really important for ITs who are looking to change into make a change into sector to look into um, cyber security engineers or specialists which is a field which is growing quite a lot and uh, is going to keep on growing due to the fact that technology keeps evolving and new techniques are, are coming up also it's really important to look into the history of uh, cyber security and uh, the culture behind uh, behind it uh, so as you can see um, sensitive business information goes beyond strong password well um, as we know from the history of cyber security started with for example simple um, try try and combination to gain access to password but now with Kali Linux and other uh, machines is is possible to do more advanced uh, uh, cyber uh, attacks and uh, this is due to the history and the culture of how this has been evolving during the year and how it's been changing also when we look into the importance of training our staff we have to look into the economic uh, financial part where by having by investing money on training staff we then save money on uh, future attacks where our staff will be prepared and the the damages caused by this uh, cyber attack will not impact as much as as a company where um, where the, um, the awareness is not being taught at the same way and also it uh, is important because it is going to boost uh, the employee confidence and uh, reduce the stress so as we all know by having a, a well-trained employees within the organization this will just uh, generates a higher profit to the company and also uh, for them the employee himself is going to achieve more knowledge and become uh, an expert more an expert in uh, the field also um, we also mentioned the gdpr last time where we all know that uh, by the eu law which uh, we're looking into this uh, compliance in the 2018 2018 has made it necessary for companies and organizations to implement stricter policy ahead to rules and regulation properly as we all know uh, the figures and amount of money which company are going to be paying in case of uh, data policy breach where companies are going to pay millions of pounds of uh, pound for of fines by not following this compliance this gdpr and uh, this will this will really affect 
will really impact uh, financially the business. Now uh, that we just um, explain how important it is to, for the staff to be aware and uh, really train, we're now going to look into uh, methods, effective methods for for companies, enterprises to um, follow when training the staff. So a couple of um, um, cybersecurity prevention methods, as we all know, uh, as as we all know, which they're not always uh, uh, granted. These are uh, there are uh, firewalls, endpoint protection softwares, two-factor ident identificator, antivirus and malware protection, VPN policies and training. So, a couple of them I'm pretty sure they're not new to uh, to us, but uh, not everyone does know what are the features and what are the benefits of. Uh, using this uh, this um these protections so as we all know uh, a firewall is simply uh, is simply a network security device that monitors income and outgoing network traffic and permits a block data pro packets based on uh, the set of security rules um, firewall is basically as you can see from the name is basically a world which filters um, data. So um, depending on your operating system machine, we can we can go into the settings and uh, choose um, the choose which type of uh, settings we wanna uh, use for um, firewall. So uh, by default, for example, Windows machine comes with uh, some default settings of our firewall, but these settings can be uh, disabled. And once you disable your settings, you're now making your machine uh, vulnerable because we're now removing all these filters and uh, it will be really easy for like um, hackers now to penetrate into your system and uh, or they can leak into your system and, and drop malicious uh, malicious work malware. Uh, so as we can, as I mentioned is simply a wall which uh, establish a barrier between uh, your internal network and incoming traffic from external sources. And also, we have to look into endpoint protection softwares. So, for example, there are a variety of uh, companies. There are a variety of companies which offers this uh, endpoint protection. So if we look into some figures, we can see some uh, some of them. Let's see if we can see some. Watch it. No, I don't. I never heard of this one. Is uh, uh, I'm looking into some of um, some of them.
Okay, there are companies like BlackBerry and other smaller companies which they produce um, these softwares. Let me see. Unified Endpoint Management. Okay, Unify Endpoint Management is a software uh, which is managing the security of internal IoT devices. So with this software here, we are able to, to control this, um, having an endpoint protection where all the, um, um, where, the, where all the application and all the software are going to be um, uh, monitored by by um, by an endpoint. One second. So, uh, organization uh, need endpoint protection software to protect the information security system from infiltration through endpoint breaches as well as safeguard and data employee of laptops, laptops and PCs. So I made an example with uh, BlackBerry, but I do know there are many other uh, companies on a second. Not just BlackBerry. Yeah. Ivanti, oh, Ivanti, yeah. Employee management software. Yeah. So there are many, many companies. Uh, network security companies, which are always hiring uh, cybersecurity specialists or engineers, and uh, and uh, in within this organization, depending on which uh, which field you be working, there are different software which where they're working on, and uh, endpoint uh, protection is one of them. So, for example, if we look into this company, they offers uh, event news, fine point management, visibility. I just want to see the the features, like what 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 are the benefits of using it, of using the software. So. So yeah, so for example, this one there for complete visibility and accurate IT asset insight, onboard uh, provisioning process, manage and secure all your endpoint, query all devices and get real time operation awareness, proactive, pro proactively diagnose and uh, remediate uses quickly deliver faster resolution without disruption user. So I do know that there is a, there is a, a better specification. I can't find them right now. 
That's fine. That's fine. Huh? Um, is it okay? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's okay. Yeah. I understand. So, okay. Okay, coming back to coming back to the explain endpoint protections, then there are different categories for our endpoint protection. So we have anti-malware, as we can understand from the name, is just uh, a, a software which will protect you protect you from malware infections uh, and the software can uh, detect the suspicious files and quarantine and delete it so it's really good then there are web browser security by web browser security uh, is just simply when you accidentally visit uh, an infected website and now your your software will pop up and just blocking the access to the to the uh, website. Then there are um, also related to web browser security. There are different types of them: uh, web filtering, gateway, and anti-exploit tools. So I explained web filtering, I think, which is the one where it blocks the page. Then there are there is gateway. This approach provides more sophisticated features such as behavioral analysis, analysis to detect zero-day malware and in-depth uh, secure uh, service layer inspection to identify uh, encrypt, encrypted threats. So this is more an advanced where they're looking more into analyzing this data and get as much information as possible. And then there's anti-exploit tools which is preventing on, uh, on to detecting and blocking advanced exploit uh, exploit atta uh, attacks on the web browser. And uh, now we have to talk about um, mobile device management. So by mobile device management is simply where, um, for example, we mentioned uh, bring your own uh, device policy where um, where an employee can choose to bring their own device uh, in the organization, and then they can uh, is is uh, they taking accountability for what they do, and uh, for some devices provided for the company, there are software such as uh, MDM Mobile Device Management, which uh, protects uh, the the they basically going to protect your mobile endpoint and uh, the mainly um, the mainly um, controlled by IT administrators which can uh, set secure rules and uh, commands for the devices or even erase the data or on the lost on the lost uh, phone um, Coming down to the category, there is also mobile threat defense and uh, endpoint detection and uh, uh, responses. These are mainly all related to mobile security. Now, on uh, looking into other other categories, we have data loss prevention (DLP) which the software uh, simply enforce policies on data sharing and blocks restrict, restricted type of content from being sent outside the organization. So mainly all the data has to uh, remain confidential within the organization and there shouldn't be any type of leak of uh, information within the company. And then there are also embedded system securities, which are non-traditional endpoints uh, protections. Another uh, another method to prevent from attacks is introduce introducing two-phase authenticator, where we seem we all know that where you simply 
setting up a recovery system, uh, a recovery uh, address where a code will be sent into. And the only way to log in is by uh, entering the code that's been sent to the to the recovery address. Now we, we already spoke about anti-malware, which is pretty much uh, connected to antiviruses. And uh, we already looked into it. Now we're going to understand how important are VPNs, virtual private networks, which uh, is simply uh, an additional um, protection where we can now um, uh, hide our IP address. We can now modify our IP address and uh, we can uh, even um, move our location in uh, different parts around the world. So as you can see, um, VPNs mask your internet protocol uh, address. So uh, your online activity will not be uh, monitored as, as much as it was before. So most important VPN service establish secure and encrypted connection to provide great, pro great privacy than even a secured Wi-Fi hotspot. So by using our VPN, we have uh, really great uh, features, uh, functionality, and it's always recommended to install this VPN in uh, all our devices, such as from laptop to mobile phones, in order to keep our IP address uh as safe as possible so this image just explains how beneficial is having a vpn and how uh, dangerous could be not using it uh, now we have to look into our final we're moving into our final stages, where we're going to look how important is uh, company policies. So we already explained how important it is to make uh, security awareness among the staff. And uh, these are several, um, several um, stages that can be introduced by by companies in order in order to them to make awareness within the staff. So we can, they can be providing guidelines and, uh, on how uh, to use these uh, supply technologies. Also protocol that has to be followed in order to ensure personal and business uh, data uh, security. Also process on how disaster recovery will roll out in the event of a security breach. So this will raise more awareness. Password security practice, information on how employees are used, are used the network on what level of assets they are provided with. And also how to recognize suspect emails or posts. So I just want to ask you, within the organization you worked, have you ever been provided with uh, these uh, guidelines and procedures to follow? Um, I mean, uh, with respect to uh, connecting to VPN, yes. I mean, uh, there are certain uh, uh, there are certain uh, I would say URLs and. Uh, uh, confidential data to which if I have to access so those things are available only on VPN and I can access only if I'm connected uh, through VPN I cannot access otherwise I mean even if I have the internal network email address and the complete network is internal but still to to access those there is 
VPN requirement. And yeah, uh, as as we discussed in the last uh, meeting as well, uh, so sending out emails to external uh, external email addresses is also prohibited for for users outside uh, the organization or maybe uh, beyond the network of of that particular um, network. So yeah. Okay. Those so this comes this comes as uh, guidelines basically. Yeah, yeah. Some right. sets of tools that cannot be cannot be breached, right? Yeah, correct. Okay, That's okay. True. Okay, thank you very much. <clears throat> um, other uh, methods are also investing security and backup, where it is important to have all this information saved in the uh, external servers, for example, where in case uh, there, is, there are leaks of data, we can have a backup. And, uh, and this, um, this uh, data that's been compromised are not fully lost. Also, you have to stay up to date with all security system. As we mentioned, uh, cyber attacks, uh, evolving day by day and it's really important to stay up to date where the cap the capability of attackers is increasing regularly as scams continue to evolve um which means that you always have to stay with the latest version of uh of how to protect uh, and stay safe within the organization also you have to test the backup and security system regular regularly. So once the software has been introduced or, or the new system, the new information technology system is in place, it's always really important to test the effectiveness of, uh, of the system or the software. And uh, it's always important to collect this data, gather this data in order for for them to improve and and ensure that uh, they can cope with these uh, attacks. So some uh, key organizational policies which has to be looked into, well, um, which we have already covered in the in the, the previous sections where. Uh, acceptable use of ICT policy, email, email policy, mobile device policy, bring your own device policy, information security policy, introduction process, training process, and cyber security policy. Now we're going to evaluate the process used to keep up to date with emerging technologies. So as a, as we always. As we mentioned before, uh, company has to try to stay up to date, and there are several tips for us to do that. So here, for example, we can follow security professionals and influencers. So nowadays, you know how important are social media and how they're propagating, how they're spreading uh, information. So there are social media such as Twitter, or for example, even Instagram or other blogs. There are loads of influencers or IT specialists where they're sharing their own experience. And from here, there are several names that are worth to have a look into and see, and see what knowledge they have to share with us. Also, other uh, ways to stay safe in the internet is to buy browsing security-related social media topics. By when, whenever we are onto social media, not everything is real, for example. So it's really important for us to spot um, fake news with real, real news. And, uh, Therefore, it's not just 
the software which is going to filter this for us, but it's also our awareness of how things are going and which information are more credible than others. Also, other ways will be by attending live sessions. So there are loads of webinars and uh, and loads of e online events that are happening uh, on different platforms. So, for example, LinkedIn. On LinkedIn, there are tons of live events that happens in a day, and uh, they're pretty much free, where people can just book their own tickets and uh, they can now join these webinars or lectures or workshops where we we'll really help uh, you gain have more understanding and gain more knowledge uh, on uh, regarding cyber security so they are definitely worth to have a, a, a try also it's really important for us to check on vulnerability and risk risks uh, advisor advisory feeds so as we can see there are there are loads of uh, web browser apps software operating system and variety of personal and professional tools which we'll be using on the daily and which could be attacked so it's really important to use vulner vulnerability alert fields and advisory sites which are there for us to help and to ensure that we keep uh, our personal data protected so uh, for example common uh, resources will include have been pw need us certificates united states computer emerging readiness team security focus national vulnerability database full disclosure or sec list organization so for example let's check into one of them and see what they are exactly yeah so i just open uh one of the national vulnerability database so you say there are a couple of pages general vulnerability which is product development yeah so i'm pretty sure these pages are really worth to look into full disclosure So as we can see, a public random natural forum for detailed this disclosure of vulnerabilities and exploitation techniques, as well as tools, paper, news, and event of interest to the community. The relaxed atmosphere of this weekly list provides some comic relief and certain industry gossip. More importantly, Fresh vulnerability sometimes hit the list many hours of hours a day or days before they pass through the book book track monitoration team. So let's look into one of them. So these are like blogs. WordPress before. These are basically blogs where they're sharing um, information 
full disclosure. So I would, I would really suggest to have a proper research before looking into this, these documents. Okay. Can you share these links or are these present in the Moodle? In the, the presentation, yeah. I, I will um, email you this presentation. Okay. okay. Yeah, okay. Yes. Let's look into the last one, maybe something different. The International Center is a program of Science Technology Institute, a branch of Science Institute, which monitors the level of malicious activity on the internet, particularly with regards to large scale infrastructure events. Oh yeah, so they have also podcast, which we can, yeah, there are loads of podcasts where we can listen and stay up to date with uh, cyber attacks, threat and way of prayer, prevention. Yeah, so this is uh, everything for today's session. Yeah, podcast, as we saw. Yeah, so this is everything for today. <clears throat> okay. Okay, then uh, let me stop recording.